spring seventh graders. It is ah, who knows anymore. Wednesday? Yeah, that seems right. It's Wednesday, the twenty third of September. It is chapter three, section two. Uh, once again, I'm take my mask off here. Once again, um, notebooks have to be completed. You're going to turn those in uh, after we finish chapter three, which is. Uh, what, you know, be sometime next week. So the following week, which is that first week of October before you're on fall break, you'll need to bring in on Tuesday or Thursday or even that Friday or even the Friday before if we're already done. Just any time after we're done with Chapter 3, somebody's going to need to bring in your physical notebook where you're writing these notes down. Okay, and I even put that in the classwork uh, section of Google Classroom now. And so, again, I've said that over and over and over. Uh, I think a lot of you are on top of this, so good job on that. But if you're not, uh, bad news is you got to write those all down and in an order. The good news is you still have time. If you are, um, you know, if you could just uh, do one extra a day, you should have more than enough time to focus if you're behind. Uh, more than enough time to focus and catch up, I should say. Uh, so, again, there's not going to be any way for me to tell when I grade them on what day specifically you did them. So as long as you get it done and they're in order, it's all going to be good, okay? Your questions yesterday I haven't looked through yet. Uh, again, those aren't technically due till the day of the test. So if you did not get yesterday's questions finished yesterday, that's okay. Um, but again, my recommendation is that you do not wait and do try to do all four the night before the test or whatever. You need to be studying that time. Like again, those of you that are probably hearing this have you have mostly done a good job of all this stuff. Um, so I'm just reaffirming mostly what you're already doing. Um, those of you, there are still people, we are coming up on a week from chapter two test tomorrow, and we still have several that haven't even taken that. But those people uh, are probably not watching these videos either. So uh, who's to say? I've tried calling or whatever, but again, if you're not doing, if you're not answering your uh, attendance question, you're counted as absent. If you're not turning in your tests and stuff, they're mar going marked down to zero. Not a smart strategy. Um, so you still got time to catch up, but let's get it going. Um, before we get into this, I'll scroll back for a second. These are the New England colonies. These are the, the colonies out of the 13 original colonies. They're the farthest north uh, in what we now, of course, call the United States. Back then, it wasn't the United States yet. But I do want to point out that on this chapter three test, you will have to, on a blank map, label all 13 colonies. I'm not, uh, how is that going to work online? I'm not sure yet, uh, but I will figure it out. Hopefully. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. Um, but uh, I have a map to attach to the, the paper test. Hopefully I'll be able to scan that and get it in the test where I'll have a certain number and label that you put it on there. So you'll need to label, uh, you know, the, the colonies we're going to talk about in the next three uh, sections, which are the New England colonies, the middle colonies, and the southern colonies. And there's 13 total. So Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York, and so on. So the Jamestown was settled by the Virginia Company. And like I said last time, their idea was that they're just going to go ashore and be like, gold everywhere, and just pick it up and then get back on the boat and -hee -hee -hee, run away and be like, all right, we're super rich now. Uh, and like I said last time, there were so many problems uh, with that plan. The main problem being, if you look out your window right now, uh, I don't know your life, but I'm pretty sure you're not going to see giant softball sized chunks of gold laying around on the ground because that sort of scenario doesn't really exist anywhere. Uh, <laughs> anywhere. Uh, so the other problem is that, that it, it did, if gold were just everywhere, it'd be a lot less valuable. So uh, not only did these dingbats not understand the lack of gold, they didn't really understand basic economics, which is based on the law of supply and demand, which means that the more the something there is, the less it's going to be worth. You know, if I try to get uh, sell you a pound of sand, it's not going to cost very much because there's sand everywhere. So, uh, but the New England colonies that we're talking about today were founded for a different reason: religious freedom. Um, persecution is different than prosecution. Okay, 
persecution is something that you have very possibly experienced in your life. Um, a lot of people do at some point in time. That's where you receive any type of negative treatment for your religion, for your race, or for your beliefs. Now, uh, you know, the, pros the persecution, excuse me, that we've experienced is probably uh, pretty mild compared to a lot of other groups, but a lot of us have faced negative attitudes and beliefs for things that we believe it happens. Now, to be really persecution, it has to happen over a long period of time, not just somebody, you know, roasting you and your group of friends or whatever. But the point is, there were a lot of people in these European countries who did not feel like they could practice their religion in the way they saw fit. Whether they were Protestants living in a Catholic country or vice versa, or like we mentioned back in chapter two, they're now becoming a lot of different uh, denominations, a lot of different uh, flavors or styles of Protestantism. You see this now. You know, if you are, uh, if you go to a church that is Christian, in other words, believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that's a Christian church. And if you're not a Catholic, then you're a Protestant. And there are lots of different types of that. There's um, Presbyterian. There's still Lutherans. Uh, there are Baptists. There are uh, Church of God. There, there's a bunch. And some I'm forgetting. I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm just you know, can't remember, I don't have a whole list of uh, all different religions off the top of my head. But anyway, King Henry VIII, um, basically in the beginning of his life, he was a Catholic. And if you're the king, you don't really um, get told no a lot um, back then because you would just arrest or kill the people that told you no, which, again, is not a very good way to go through life, you know. Um the, and you'll see pretty soon that this Henry VIII character is not really a well-adjusted, sane person. Um, because basically, here's what he wants, and it's a son. Uh, and so he has uh, a wife, and they cannot conceive a son. And the Catholic Church, which he belongs to, do, does not allow divorce. And so he has to, he has to, he chooses to, I guess I should say, uh, have her accused and convicted of crimes and have her beheaded. And so this keeps occurring and occurring and occurring. He keeps having a wife. They keep not having a son and she loses her head. And then, so the Protestant church comes along and they allow divorce. And so eventually one of his wives, he's like, you know, I'm thinking about joining the Protestant church. And she's like, that's a great idea. Mr. Bats, you might be wondering, why do people keep marrying him if, you know, well, like I said a couple minutes ago, he's the king. You don't really have options at this point. And so if the king, so anyway, he ends up with eight different wives. And, um, but between, I don't know which one number, the fourth or the fifth and the third or the fourth, I'm not sure. He uh, creates the Anglican church or the church of England, which is a Protestant church which now allows divorce, which his future wives were like, whoo, thank goodness, you know, because they were not really uh, wanting the head chopped off, which I think we would all agree is a pretty reasonable, uh, you know, goal in life. Uh, and so he starts the Anglican Church. Instead of the Pope being the head of that church, he's now the head of the Church of England. And so this causes a lot of, you know, you would understand uh if you're raised and you grow up in a certain religion and you're now told this country isn't that anymore and you have to turn your back on all your beliefs, some people are going to be like, that's fine. But a lot of people are like, no, this is my identity. This is who I am. This is what I believe. And I'm not just going to change because you, um, you know, can't have a son. Now, uh, this is a health class, of course. Uh, but, you know, today, in 2020, if you had eight consecutive wives and you couldn't have children, we would be like, hey, bro, it's you. Like, you know, you, you're the one that needs the medical procedure done, not your wives. The, the odds of eight consecutive women who are not able to bear children are very low. So obviously he had some sort of medical condition where he could not uh, have children effectively. But, you know, again, when you're the king and somebody says, hey, maybe it's a, you know, they chop your head off back then. So, um, so again, you have people who want to reform the Anglican church. People are upset because they don't think that the, 
uh, the king is running the church in the way that they think God would want to run the church, which, you know, if you, and those are the, back then, those are the two main forces in your life. The only person that you think the king can answer to would be God. And so there are some people who want to reform the Anglican church and make it like back. It wasn't like it back, was back in the old days. Like people say all the time now, uh, and, and they were called Puritans. They wanted to return to the purity of the Anglican church. And then there were some people that were like, listen, this is, um, you know, messed up beyond repair. We're just going to do out and go form our own church. And they're called separatists. Now Catholics are a third group altogether. And they're not liked by either of these third, these two other groups. And so they're wanting to like, Hey, we want to, we want to practice our religion the way we want to practice our religion. I have my beliefs and I have my thoughts about what God wants me to do. And I want to be able to practice those as I see fit. And in a way that I believe as a Puritan or a separatist or a Catholic during that time, the way that they would believe that God wants them to behave. So some of the separatists make a deal with the Virginia company. They would pay for basically voyage. And these are the famous pilgrims that we see that you make the little hats in kindergarten with the buckles on them and cardboard and the, they wear the shoes with the buckles on them and stuff. And they, pilgrims are, as we know from the last chapter, a journey to a holy place is called a pilgrimage. So somebody taking that journey would be called pilgrims of the lower case P, which is why we call these people the pilgrims of the capital P. Okay, because they were considered to be um, people who were on a journey for a religious reason. And so famously, of course, they set sail on the Mayflower, which is one of the most famous boats that uh, has ever existed. You know, we talked about several of the other ones already, Nina and the Pinta and the Santa Maria. I don't know what else would be in that top. The Titanic probably would round out the top five. And those are probably the most five, five most famous boats of all time. We've talked about four of them already. So it's not really a boating class, generally speaking. We'll talk more about wars and stuff later on. And so they cross the Atlantic Ocean and settle in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. They um, were aiming for Virginia, like it said on the last slide. They missed and landed on Massachusetts, which is a pretty big miss if you look at a map. You know, if you got on a plane or a train or in a car in 2020 and missed by that much, you'd be like, well, this GPS is a little bit broken. But back then, there's not a lot you could do about it. If the winds push you out of the way, the winds have pushed you out of the way. There's not a lot you could do. Before they came ashore, they wrote the first written uh, set of laws in what we now call America. It's called the Mayflower Compact. Basically like, hey, we're going to follow the rules and we're all agreeing here. And the rules being English law. And so the Mayflower Compact was the first opportunity for these people to have a, and for anybody in America to have a written set of laws. Okay. Attendance question. Let's do it now. Um, how many posters do you think are on my walls in this room? I'll turn this around and give it a little look. But there, There's a bunch. They're all over the place. That's just one little short. Of course, I have some behind me, as you can see. But I'm not about all the way across the room. We'll have a contest. See who's closest. Uh, when will you announce the winner? I don't know. Maybe never. Because I might never bother to count these myself. Because the point is, you're watching the videos and that you know what question you're trying to answer. But eventually, I'll probably count them. Because I'll be curious, just like you are, to see who won. And also, if you're watching the videos. Because we don't have many people doing that nowadays. Now, uh, the Massachusetts Bay Company receives a charter to start a colony. They are made up of Puritans. Puritans, again, are the people that did not want to split with Anglican Church. They just wanted to go back to the ways that they felt are the right uh, ways to run their church. Uh, and they wanted to be free of persecution. They wanted to be able to choose how they worship in a way that they say, see fit. And they settled in what we now call Boston, which, of course, is in Massachusetts. Here's the kicker, though. Um, so let's think of it this way. The intercom goes off in the school, and they're like, hey, uh, starting tomorrow, the new rule is that uh, at this school, you can only wear blue shirts. And blue shirt people are the good, right people. And if you're not wearing a blue shirt, uh, then we're going to mistreat you. You are got a detention, and so on and so forth. Your teachers are going to be fired. Now, some of us in class were like, whoa, that's not fair. 
I'm not happy about it. Obviously, I have an orange shirt on today. So somebody in class is like, no, we're not going to take this. And I'm like, yeah. Everybody should be able to wear whatever shirt they want. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, we should start our own school. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Ah. And we all have this big protest and we walk out and I buy some property across the street and I start my own school. And day one comes and I'm the principal and I get on the intercom and I'm like, all right, everybody make sure that you're wearing your orange shirt. And everybody's like, whoa, whoa, blah, 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 blah. No, that wasn't the deal. The deal is uh, we wanted to be able to wear the shirts that we wanted, not just orange shirts. And I'm like, no, this is orange shirt school. Get with the program or you're in detention. This is pretty similar to what these Puritans did. They left England saying, hey, uh, we want to be able to worship the way that we see fit. Everybody should have freedom of religion. And then they got over to America and they're like, you're not worshiping the way we want. People are like, yeah, but I thought that the thing was freedom of religion. And they were like, no, it was really the freedom of my religion. I want you to do what I want. And so a lot of people got persecuted even after they got over to America. So they had to start Connecticut, Rhode Island, who were kicked out of Massachusetts, which is pretty ironic and pretty hypocritical. And that, you'll find that a lot in history. And this does not mean these are necessarily bad people, but a lot of people do that. They think like, well, you know, Somebody's telling me to do something one way, and I don't want to do it, so I'm going to say we should be able to do it however we want. But then when we get that freedom, we're going to be like, well, well, you need to do it my way. So Rhode Island, which is neither a road nor an island, uh, it is our little teeny, teeny, tiny, small estate, uh, was founded by Roger Williams, who a minister who was not on board with uh, what the Puritans were doing. New Hampshire, as you can see here, was founded by John Wheelwright. Uh, they really made steps towards actual freedom of religion. They did not punish or persecute people. For, now, again, to be very clear, these are within a very narrow scope of Catholics and Protestants. You know, uh, we don't know how they would react if they had a group of, you know, Muslims, Buddhists, Hindu, snake charmers, atheists or whatever uh, come in. You know, who knows what they would have been then. So um, these are all a pretty similar range. And so uh, New Hampshire in 1679, as you can see, became independent of Massachusetts, uh, Native Americans, relations were all over the map. Some people were uh, on friendly terms with them, and the Native Americans were generally pretty hospitable. Uh, but some people, of course, uh, were mistreating them. They were moving on the land without permission. Uh, there was a war between the Pequot people, known as uh, King Philip's War. The, with It was with their chief, whose name was Chief Massasoit, I believe. Um, but we call him Philip because, you know, whatever. We're just English speakers. You're going to try to speak names in English. Uh, and so um, this was not really, when you add in the fact that we had a lot of advanced diseases that the Native Americans didn't have, and the, it was a pretty uh, unfair fight. And so this is the beginning of a lot of uh, us taking Native American land. So uh, that's it for the day. Uh, make sure you answer the attached form with the question that I asked just a few minutes ago. Uh, make sure... Um, you are writing these notes down in your notebook. Make sure you're staying on top of your questions on uh, yesterday and tomorrow, Tuesday and Thursday this week. Uh, and make sure you're washing your hands and uh, wearing masks when you go out. And uh, have a good rest of your Wednesday. And I will see you or you will see me um, pretty soon. Have a good day.